so I've been home for about nine days now, and it's been a bit of an interesting experience here. Um, the way I've changed, the way I've grown, the resilience I've built, and uh, how easily it feels like I've overcome alcohol when I'm there, but yet, I mean, there's no chance of me drinking here, but I have, I've had cravings here. I never had there when I was working in food and beverage. I had to pour alcohol. I served it all day. It never bothered me. Being back here, just something subconscious about the conditioning of this place, the way I dealt with the lack of fulfillment that I was moving towards. Um, so let me tell you just a little bit about my time back here. Oh, this is this is home right here. Real grateful. I got to grow up in a really nice middle class. Uh, life you know we had a big big home out in kansas nothing fancy literally in the centermost city in all of the united states so things like oceans and palm trees um not something that i knew those were basically things from the movies you know california is about a fantasy as much as a reality until recently i mean i have actually visited let's see if we can get out of this fence here Oh, there we go. Come on. Let me out. All right. So we're going to take a little walk here while there's still some light out. Make sure the dog doesn't get loose. I'll probably cut all this out because holy cow. Come on, Vince. Okay, I had to have a little fight with the gate there and made it work. So we'll take a walk while there's still a little bit of daylight out here. We'll head south. Uh, so... This is the block I grew up on. Um, we moved out here, built this house in 88, summer I turned six. That's just the side of the house, obviously. You saw a little bit of the back. Definitely a lot different than when I grew up out here. You know, we, when the family built this place, this was on the far edge of town. Uh, we'd rock right across the road to side on Christmas trees. There were silos. This was a two lane road out here. Now it's the biggest high school in the state. I think it's still the biggest high school in the state. Road's busy and loud town i don't even know if it's a town anymore maybe you call it a city it stretches almost to the main city up to wichita we're in a suburb um there's a golf course there's big apartments there's a mini mall you know <clears throat> strip mall uh, all kinds of business restaurants it's not the same as we grew up and i'm i'm hoping my parents find a place that suits their needs a little bit better they don't need a two level five bedroom house with a big old corner lot in their 70s to maintain um so you know i'm a little curious guys tell me a little bit about your experiences with your hometown um you know tell me you know those of you who have left are there good things that you look forward to coming back to have some of you just wanted to leave and never look back are you in a place wishing that you could leave are you there and really happy and that's where you want to be. Um, you know, for me, what we had here is something that people all over the world would be grateful for. And I'm very grateful that I had it, but I've also known that this is not where I belong my whole life. Um, you know, I'm an adventurer, I'm an explorer, and you know, hometown reminds me a little bit of, for those of you who are old enough, you know, like Edward Scissorhands where everything was just so plain. Although it was kind of weird, and maybe I'm forgetting. It's been a long time since I've seen that show. But, you know, something I recognized while I was here. You know, it's late until I have a little bit of light on my face. Yeah, we're out of the trees. Something, you know, that I've recognized being here is that you know, when you develop a habit like drinking for so long, sometimes your environment can have some real subconscious, some conditioning that uh, you might not be aware of. And for me, that's something that I was fortunate to discover that as I remove myself from this environment completely, I'm around alcohol all the time, but it doesn't ever bother me. And I'm back here, and like I said, it's not like there's any real chance that I go out and drink, but I 
feel the craving maybe for the first time and here I'll I'm gonna check my my clocks real quick check my calendar and see where I'm at 332 days since I've drank and I can't consciously remember any cravings but back here you know just because this place felt so not congruent with the person I am deep down um, you know the path I was on here following following a curriculum following directions pursuing a life that didn't fit me you know that was a big part of why I ended up with my drinking habit and you know for some people I think that environment can create a really huge challenge especially once in that environment the habit you know you create the habit of drinking to try to escape the reality that you're living and because that's that's what it was for me I think that's what it is for a lot of people it's just trying to escape um, you know and I've escaped physically in a completely different way but I'm out pursuing things that matter to me and here it was just you know okay where can I trade my hours for dollars how can I own stuff how can I trade my time for currency and trade my currency for stuff to try to fill the void and I know that for me so I keep scratching bugs off my face here you know there's there is something more and something bigger out there and I'm still trying to figure it out but I'm on the path now you know helping inspire people to get sober and get fit to find the most truest versions of themselves and I still feel like you know a lot of this will have to do with people bouncing back from from breakups from divorce from loss of a job loss of their identity you know a career investments a mortgage and I still think that the people that I can relate to the most are gonna be you know men who have been through it divorced men especially so we'll see how this develops over time maybe my message is a little bit wider but you know I want to speak to the people who and help inspire the people who are maybe lost who need to bounce back who need to get away from that habit of drinking or drugs or vices or whatever they're using to try to escape the reality that they're existing in but it's not what they feel in their heart is where they're supposed to be so you know I am on my way back here pretty soon um, I've done some client work here I've got another video that showed a little bit about that and I'm in my mind I'm about six or seven weeks away from the end of my time out on the West Coast for a short amount of time now a lot of really amazing things have happened as a result of that um, for those of you that have followed you know and like I mentioned I am now 100% sober off alcohol closing in on 90 days no weed I didn't even know I wanted to stop smoking weed I'm still not 100% sure that that's the right path but it's the path I'm on here you know um, developing the best version of myself inspiring others to do the same leading by example and you know at this moment it seems like cannabis doesn't belong on that path so you know who knows maybe I'll come back and I'll reassess in a year but some really cool things have fallen into place I am I've mentioned buying some land I was looking at some spots in California that's not the right path for me um, I found my perfect spot and if you guys look back at my videos eight or nine years ago I made a little kind of a film about what is I believe my favorite place my favorite single spot in the world that I've been to and that's a hot springs out in Colorado and I've got myself a piece of land right out there that I'm probably gonna pick up right by the hot springs now part of my purpose on this mission you know adventure fitness and freedom that's my own pursuits freedom being the largest desire um, and this place has no covenants other than I have to have at least 150 square feet so I can have a tiny home almost no rules whatsoever 
going to be able to pay cash for this. I might work with the family just so I can have some, uh, a little bit of savings to coast on because my freelance is really up in the air and I want to make sure I don't get myself in a situation where I'm stuck waiting tables for $2 an hour in Kansas trying to figure out how to escape again, which is an actual possibility here. But, you know, the resilience I've developed throughout this wild path. You know what? We're going to keep walking this way so you can see my face. There's a little bit of light coming over there. But the resilience and self-belief that I've developed are, you know, something that I know I can just keep moving forward. If I come back here, the bottom falls out with the freelance. Yeah, I'll probably just head right back to the West. I'll probably head back out to California and wait tables for a little while longer. Um, YouTube's making money. I've got a fallback. Let's let's say that I ended up in a situation where I needed to provide, provide a reliable, good income. I don't have a family. I don't have a kid. I'm celibate. I'm not messing around. But let's say that I got married and had a kid all of a sudden and needed to support it all. I've got a business that I ran in the past that I can make a lot of money, live a pretty good life doing, live a far better life than most of the people I know, but it's not the path that I'm supposed to be on. And I'm not just going to shrug my shoulders and say, okay, well, I found the thing that works. I found the thing that'll make me more money than most. I'm just going to go ahead and do that with my life because I don't need to right now. So, you know, if things don't work out, I know that I've developed the self-belief and the resilience and I can do what it takes to make whatever I have to ha make happen, happen. And I had it all in me before this, but now I just fully know I can go out and do, you know, take the actions, whatever awkward or discomfort it might be. I can go out to whatever environment I choose and I can get myself working immediately in food service. Out on the West Coast and in a lot of states, you get paid really good. Um, for tipped food service in Kansas you do not it's terrible it's not something I want to do I've got a degree I've owned businesses I think you can tell I've got a whole lot more to offer the world than handing people stuff but you know we all got to do what we got to do to make things happen and most people don't just go out and do that thing they were called to without really paying their dues and having to work and doing jobs they don't like and you know that's just life so One of the big things that's come out of all this is that true self-belief. Um, you know, I've gotten myself in really great shape and continue to improve and evolve, and that's going to be in multiple phases after this. You know, I'm still shredding off a little more fat, and then we're going to start throwing on some more muscle. And then we focus on leaning down and then bulking up and leaning down and bulking up. And, you know, that's just kind of the way this works. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. But... The outcomes from this are, I'm sober, I've defined my purpose, I've developed self-belief, I've found my direction for life, where I'm going to buy land, how I can do that with little to no debt, and not be stuck for 30 years paying on a mortgage. Things are getting really weird in the world right now, and owning land outright with water my land has water on it already supreme court has the the towns there have taken the front range the big cities denver and colorado springs to supreme court and won to keep their hands off of our water up in the area i'm at in the mountains so that's a really important thing for living a self self-sustaining off-grid life oh man this video is not going to get a whole lot of views because it's too dark to see me. Oh well, it is what it is. I wanted to give you guys an update here. Um, I'll be heading home pretty soon. Home, it's funny. Home, I am home, but I'm going home. It's an odd feeling, right? Like, I'm getting a little bit homesick for the West Coast. But I'm also concerned for family health here. So, you know, life comes to us in a bunch of different phases. And one of the most important things I've learned through all this is definitely not to be focused on 
the outcome that you want. Don't be anxious about making the money, about getting the certain physique, about getting the job title, owning the home. It's just about developing yourself, being the best version of that person, being someone that you can be proud of every single day, never going back on your word to yourself. Everything else is going to fall into place as long as you always pursue the best version of yourself. That's easier said than done in a world that many of us feel like we just have to escape from the life that that world subjects us to living the way that they tell us to being the person they tell us we need to be dressing how they want you to dress only being worth as much as they tell us we're worth so I hope that uh, those of you who are following along on this wild journey I call life trying to figure things out figure out how to have a positive impact on the world and live a life that is truly worth living one that I'm proud of every day I hope to inspire some of you guys too to really seek out what you actually want for yourself what does this really mean and hopefully really separate your mind from objects from pleasures from the things that we're told to pursue the things that we're used to everyone pursuing yet we feel no real fulfillment in those things um, you know there is something more out there for all of us if you have a calling like I do that calling doesn't always come through an organization from work from church sometimes you got to figure it out on your own and I think I've done a pretty good job starting to figure this out for myself but man every day seems to have new complexities and this is such an interesting feeling being home now knowing I'm coming home soon being somewhat anxious to be around safety and comfort at the other time recognizing that being in a comfortable situation is one of those things that makes it very easy to just slide back into habits and to not continue to pursue that best version of yourself or myself relentlessly in the way I have. I haven't been able to be comfortable and I don't have anybody to rescue me or anywhere to go if things go bad. I gotta figure it out and work it out and that it's a pretty good feeling. It's not always comfortable. <laughs> not always easy. But it feels good. And I know that even if I get this land and I build my little oasis out there and continue to develop my life and my brand to where I can help people and sustain without relying on anybody else that there is no place for me. Nowhere is going to be the right place all the time. I have that wanderlust. I need to get out and see and experience change in different things. You know, I have enjoyed being home. I'm going to miss my parents because like I said, I am a bit worried. Mom's health is not great um, and dad needs some help and I'll be back soon. At the same time, I also realize that, you know, there's famous authors and poets have written about the Wichita vortex. No matter how hard you try to leave, it sucks you back in. And I don't think there's an easier place to survive anywhere than here. Um, you know, I've referred to this place as purgatory before. You can get by. But man. It's not a place that I want to invest in getting ahead in again. I, I had a business here before I put everything into. And I'm really grateful that that didn't work out. Because I could have gotten stuck. Could have had a big nice place. Could have had a bunch of money could have been miserable. Might have had a family. I'm sure there would be amazing things if I had kids. Doesn't mean that I still wouldn't feel trapped and hate that life even if I loved those kids. And maybe that perspective will change, but I've decided I don't want kids and it's going to take a lot to change that. So, well, we'll see where this all goes. 
I'm going to head back to California early in the morning. And that is the point where all of the discomfort, all of the hard work, all of the weirdness, everything pays off. When I get back, this is the climax of the whole trip where I get to plan cool things, get cool shots. I just spent a bunch of money on a drone. I didn't want to spend the money, but I needed the drone for the shots. And there's a lot more of a story to tell here. So I'm excited that I'll get, I'm about to be back, back on the side of the ocean, back hanging out at the pier, back living a life that feels more congruent with who I am deep down. And then I get to look forward to coming back here with this mission fully complete. Coming back here with a really good story to tell. And being able to actually write the end of this. The end of this isn't about survival and just getting by like it has been. The end of this is create the story. There are a lot of wonderful things about this place but it still doesn't mean it's the right place for me right now. And I don't know if you heard that. This wild road out here, this is a, that was not something I grew up with. This was, I was out in the middle of nowhere when we came out here 27 years ago, 37 years ago. <laughs> so long ago, I got to really think to do the math. Um, a lot of good things here and it makes me grateful for where I'm at and wherever I'm at I think I'm grateful for that place and I'm grateful for the next place and I don't think there's any place I'm supposed to stay for too terribly long even if I'm settled down even once I've built my home out there in my spot of land which I can't wait to show you guys that is going to be one heck of an adventure to bring you along on to show how I do this without a bank without selling my soul to a mortgage and you know we're so this is closing in on mid-August 2024, and there's some economic tremors that are starting to show some really bad signs of things to come. Hopefully I can get my way set up off-grid out of my remote land, remote mountain land, and be somewhat unscathed by the challenges to be a little bit less impacted by all the weirdness that we have to come and this isn't me talking politics this is pragmatic listening to gold and silver and economists that stay as far away from politics as they can as they give unbiased information and you know the bank of japan just broke and we're tied into that and things are happening real weird in china and i could look back on this at some other point and say man remember that date that was right before things got wacky and I don't like to think like that, but I've also been following precious metals and world economics long enough to know there's something big that's brewing. And I'm sure trying to find my way away from it. And maybe those who do lock in a mortgage now, even as house, even as prices have substantially increased over the last four or five years, maybe they'll shelter a bunch of their wealth from inflation by locking in a mortgage now but me i'm going to pay cash and build a place with my hands that's part of my dream in this self-reliance and pursuit of freedom you guys thanks for coming along with me and hanging out and watching this uh, little vlog in the dark i'll get some more footage on the flight home who knows maybe i'll make this a separate video just because it's uh <laughs> it's a little dark Love you guys. Thanks for coming along on the journey. Be safe.